Right around the time that Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, embarked on a road trip in an F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck, there were people on YouTube saying that they were selling their F-150 Lightnings because of the problem that Ford CEO was about to discover. This is not clickbait. I'm absolutely being 100% genuine here. What timing is this? These YouTube videos get revealed by guys that had gone and bought an F-150 Lightning. And then Jim Farley says, whoa, okay, you might have a point. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Ford CEO Jim Farley has admitted that the F-150 Lightning will have to improve. He said, have to improve, parenthesis, emphasis added, after he waited 40 minutes to get the battery up to only 40%. 40 minutes to get the battery to 40%. Guys, I was pretty heavily criticized by a lot of people. I understand it. It's a very emotional topic, but a lot of people really railed on me about this when I said the F-150 Lightning had a big problem. I said the problem was the charging. Charging speed was too slow. People said, no, it's 150 kilowatt charging. There's much slower EVs than that. And I agreed with them. Absolutely, there is. However, a lot of pickup truck drivers drive a fair way. That's one point. The second is the F-150 Lightning has a massive battery pack. Um, this means it needs to be charged more often. But because it's such a big battery and because the charging speed is relatively slow, uh, it takes a very long time. I mean, even Jim Farley said it himself. He said it needs to improve. In fact, he said he had a reality check when he went on his road trip testing his company's own vehicle. In fact, he even criticized his own engineers. The boss of Ford suffered a reality check already familiar to his customers when he spent the best part of half an hour waiting for his flagship 50,000, well, actually about $60,000 electric vehicle to charge. CEO Jim Farley set off on a road trip down Route 66 to showcase the company's cutting edge electric F-150 Lightning pickup truck. Posting regular updates on Twitter and LinkedIn, he headed from Palo Alto, California to Las Vegas, but he admitted that um, it was a bit more of a struggle than he'd originally anticipated. Now, I think it was pretty obvious what was going to happen, but clearly some people just, they're not really living this world. They're not really investing the time to find out the reality here. He said, I stopped at one of the most popular charging sites in the country, I-5 in Colinga, and a low speed charger took me about 40 minutes to get to 40%. It was a really good reality check of what our customers go through and the importance of fast charging and what we're going to have to do to improve the charging experience. Now keep in mind, Ford and Jim Farley have to be given some pretty significant credit here. They're the ones that started the Nax charging revolution. Now, sure, we can't credit them for actually inventing Nax charging or put it in, putting it in cars or actually building out Tesla's supercharger network. That all goes to Tesla. I mean, got to give them some massive kudos for that. But we can credit Ford for being the first automaker to, they, what they did is they opened the floodgates for Nax charging. And it's really, you have to admit, yeah, Tesla said, okay, Nax should be the North American standard. No one agreed with that. Um, no, some people did, but a lot of people laughed at that. They mocked Tesla, uh, the website Electric, for example, mocked them. They said it was hubris, it was arrogance. Uh, obviously, uh, there was no retraction of those comments whatsoever or no admittance that that was a silly comment to make because then, or what most of the industry has now said, uh, good idea. But it all started really with Jim Farley. And he said, you know what? Why don't we use it? Why not? If it's open to us, if Elon Musk and Tesla will let us use it, hell, it makes sense to give our customers a better experience. And after that happened, all of a sudden General Motors were on board and then bang, it was like a series of dominoes. Now we've got Honda and Acura, the first Japanese automaker to actually make the decision to do it. And it's just going to be now a matter of time before Toyota and all the others do the same thing as well. Ford hailed 200,000 advance orders for the F-150 Lightning when it was unveiled in May 2021 with, the, with what the company described as a Model T moment for the 21st century. But, well, we all thought that Ford would sell at least half of those. It 
doesn't look like that's going to be the case now. A lot of people have cancelled their orders. There's quite a bit of stock now of F-150 Lightnings in dealerships. Ford, of course, haven't come anywhere near close to selling those two, more than, in fact, it was about 250,000 pre-orders. So clearly a lot of people have decided to wait for something else, whether that's a Cybertruck, another pickup truck, I'm not sure. With a range of up to 320 miles on a single charge for the more expensive versions, it became the cornerstone of the company's drive to produce 2 million electric vehicles by 2025. However, that has recently changed, unfortunately. After Ford, well, they said that EVs are not catching on as fast as they thought they would. But with a $50,000 price tag and after five price increases, it is $15,000 more expensive than the gasoline pound version. And while long recharging times left a bit of a sour taste in some people's mouths. Just 15% of charging points allow rapid charging in North America, according to the latest figures from the US Department of Energy. Though last month, the government promised another 30,000 by 2032. But the key issue here is of those 15%, fast chargers, more than half of them don't currently work. So it's a bit of a difficult situation if you're a new adopter for some people and you don't have a Tesla. That's going to change, of course, soon. However, it remains to be a challenge at the moment. Some early adopters have bought home charging stations, but the popular juice box 40 costs around 650 US dollars and the ChargePoint Home Flex around $750 with installation costs, adding up to a $6,000 bill for many people. President Biden is pushing for two thirds of new vehicle sales to be electric by 2032, but consumers have been slow to heed the call for Ford anyway, with Ford selling just 6,280 electric vehicles in July compared to 155,912 with internal combustion engine. In other words, Ford's EVs still make up, well, a very small percentage, just over 3% of all their vehicle sales in North America. Even though things have been slow for Ford this year, the industry has grown. In fact, EV sales are up more than 60% this year in North America. They're growing at a very fast pace. Now, it's true, CNBC said yesterday on mainstream media, news, it's all there, that the EV adoption would happen very slowly, much slower than what people say, and actually it wouldn't all pan out in, you know, as what we're saying here, that actually EVs are more of a fad. Now, what do you think about those claims? Let me know in the comments. Lauren Fix, analyst at the Car Coach, said, a lack of charging infrastructure is a major negative factor and consumers are increasingly frustrated. Those who don't own Teslas, that is. Charging stations are limited and very few fast chargers are available. Many of those that are accessible aren't working. Back on the road, Jim Farley needed another charge later that day. Hailing a great experience with a 350 kilowatt charge at a stop in Baker, California. Of course, Ford's F-150 Lightning couldn't take advantage of those charging speeds with a maximum theoretical charge of 150 kilowatts. However, Jim said this, it is kind of exciting to get all these speedy electrons in the battery because we've only had the slow speed charges. So this is very exciting, he said. It really highlighted the difference that nice stations and fast charging can make on the overall EV experience. Ford has asked all their dealerships to commit to spending around 1.2 million US dollars to install EV fast chargers at their locations. However, they are in court because a number of states believe that what Ford is doing here in this area is illegal. Basically, Ford is saying, if you don't install the chargers, we won't actually let you sell electric cars. Many people believe that this is a bit of a heavy handed approach, but Ford believes this is necessary. Now you can see why that is. Ford needs fast chargers. It needs EV adoption, but it needs really to improve the vehicle. And that's what Jim came away saying. We've got a lot of learning to do. Ford say that their new electric vehicle platform will be a massive improvement over the current generation. It'll be out in around 2025, about two years from now, and it should provide much faster charging 
with significantly longer ranges for its EVs. Plus, apparently, Ford say they'll also be cheaper. So there's three positives to look forward to as a result of this story. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching.